Welcome back to Medical Engineering. So today we want to talk a little bit more about x-rays and in particular what happens when the x-rays hit the body and how they interact with the tissues inside of the body. So this will be the interaction of photons on matter in a short summary of all the things that can happen. Let's go back to our slides here and this is part two of x-rays and now finally interaction of x-rays with matter. Now what happens if we have generally some x-rays interacting with matter is we get attenuation and we somehow have to model the attenuation and in order to model the attenuation we have the so-called bears lambert's law. And bears lambert's law is essentially describing us the effect what happens inside the body when the x-rays interact. So what we can see is that there is i, i0, and this strange term here. Now i is essentially what we observe at the detector. So this is our detector. And then we have i0, this guy here. i0 is the x-ray tube, it's this guy here. And this emits x-rays. And the x-rays that are emitted here, this is the intensity I0. Now what happens is that you have a patient in here. And this is our patient. Looks like this. And then the x-rays somehow interact with the patient. And this is described exactly by this term here. So what happens inside the patient is this guy. And then we detect here on the detector our i. So we can write this up as this formula. And you see that we have this exponential function here. And the exponential function to the power of minus mu times x tells us what is happening. And you see now here that x is nothing else than the length of the intersection of the ray with the body. So this is x, this guy here. Now what's mu? Mu is a characteristic constant for the material. So let's say this is the material. Let's say it's a constant material. So the patient consists completely of water. Then you can write material constant mu. So this is the x-ray absorption times the path length. And this will give you a coefficient. And if you take this coefficient e to the minus this coefficient, it will give you essentially the probability of the x-rays being absorbed and this will give you a reduction of the original x-ray intensity that is then observed in the detector. Now typically we don't have only one tissue. So typically we have many different tissues here, right? So there's a liver and there's different organs and they all have different x-ray absorption. This is actually why we do it. If they all had the same x-ray absorption, then we could only measure the path length. So instead what actually is happening here is that we have an integral. So you could say that along the body, so if this is x, then the mu, the mu at the position x, it's actually changing. Let's say this is the liver and this is the kidney and this is some other material and here's a bone. Then we have a very high mu. Then what's actually happening is that you're no longer just multiplying the path length with the constant, but instead you're measuring the integral. So you're essentially measuring the area under this curve here, and this determines this integral here, and then you take it to the minus and e to the power of minus this integral, and this gives you essentially the absorption probability. So this is how you can understand lambert bears law. So it is a function that tells you how much of the energy will get absorbed within the body. And this is dependent on the tissues and it's dependent on the location 
so that specific tissue at that location. Now you already see that this is interesting because this profile that I've been drawing here is nothing else than the intensity profile or the density profile along this line. And now you can also understand that we are kind of measuring the integral, the superposition of everything. It's a bit stupid because this integral is up here, right? So we can't measure this directly. So now you could argue, how can I actually solve for this integral? And you can see that this can be done rather easily. If we look at this equation here, then we see if we now divide by i0, so we take i over i0, and then we take the logarithm, the natural logarithm, and then we multiply with minus 1. And you see that is the left-hand side of the equation, and in the right-hand side of the equation, we have only the integral of mu over the path of our x-ray. So this is why I said earlier, look, we are measuring the integrals, because I know the tube settings, I know how many x-rays are generated, and I detect at the other side how many of these x-rays actually arrived at the detector. So everything on this side here is known. And of course the logarithm and the minus is something that I know. And all of the unknowns, they are on this side here. And this means that I'm measuring line integrals along the x-rays. So that's a cool property. And we'll see that this is essentially the key property that will allow us to generate the so-called computer tomography, how we can virtually cut our patient into slices, similar to MR that we've already seen. And we'll also see that we need a little more mathematics in order to understand computer tomography, which is essentially the reason why we're discussing MR imaging before x-rays, although x-rays have been discovered much earlier. But we will see that the mathematics of MR, they essentially date back to the Fourier transform that was discovered 250 years ago. And the actual inversion for uh, computing computed tomography was only discovered in 1997. This is the Radon transform, but we'll look into the details when we talk about computer tomography. Now, also the reason why computer tomography is not that easy is we have this stupid, you remember, we have many different energies. So actually our intensity is not just dependent on the numbered bare law here, but it's embedded in this kind of integral here. And this is an integral over the energies. And this messes up most of the reconstruction formulas. And therefore, we then have to solve them with different solution strategies in order to be able to compensate the energy dependence. Well, we'll look into that more in later videos. So let's not get confused by the multi-energetic nature of the x-rays here. We just want to show you this and we will look into more details of the multi-energetic part also in this video. One thing that we should talk about is how this mu is actually composed. So I talked about mu and said it's a material dependent kind of characteristic and it tells us that it's the liver or something like that. But there's actually more to that. It's not just mu. Mu is composed of a series of different effects. So there is mu PE, which is the photo absorption. There is mu R, which is the Rayleigh scattering. And there's mu C, which is the Compton scattering. So those three effects, they are relevant for most of X-ray imaging. There's additional coefficients that might play a role, but this is then the absorption caused by pair production and also photonuclear reactions. And this doesn't happen at the energies when we're actually talking about X-ray imaging. So this happens beyond 
200 kilovolts and above and therefore we don't have to consider these effects here. So let's look into the red ones here because these are the ones that are relevant for X-ray imaging. Now there is the photoelectric absorption and the photoelectric absorption is now happening when the X-ray is kind of entering the shell of the material under investigation and it can hit essentially an inner shell electron and this is ionized. So X-rays are ionizing radiation. Here we have a change of the atoms under investigation and the ionization is also a reason why we actually have a breakdown of DNA and stuff like that. So this is why X-rays are a pretty kind of risky kind of method to look inside of the body. But still, if you use only very few X-rays, not too many of these ionizations happen. And we assume that the risk of cancer is linear with the amount of energy deposited in the body. So here you collide with an inner shell electron and the electron is being ejected and we have ionized this material here and this is then a photoelectron that is being emerged. So this is one effect that can appear and then of course the energy of our photon here is completely absorbed. Now what can also happen? There is the Compton scattering and the Compton scattering is a kind of interaction that happens if you are interacting with the shells. So you have an incident photon that interacts with an outer orbital electron. Then the incident photon with lower energy is deflected and scattered from the atom. And we observe that almost all scattered radiation in diagnostic imaging comes from Compton scattering. So we have this photon coming in, then it's emitting this electron here and it continues in a different direction with a longer wavelength, which means that it has a reduced energy. So this is the Compton scatter and it's the main cause of absorption inside the human body. Then there's a third effect that's Rayleigh scattering. And Rayleigh scattering is that we have a low energy incident photon interacting with an outer shell electron and the electron is set into vibration. And because we vibrate the electron, it emits radiation. So then we kind of see that it changes the direction of the incident photon and this is a kind of deflection process. So we have a wavelength coming in and then we see that the direction is altered and we have a change of direction. This contributes only very little in diagnostic imaging but this way we are able to describe certain deflection effects that appear and this also reduces the energy of the photon along its path. Let's have a look at the energy dependence and we see that here in this very nice plot we see that we have the energy of the photons and we have the attenuation coefficients in this direction. So we see that depending on the energy we get a different attenuation coefficient. So if I use a higher energy you can already observe that generally the absorption coefficients here go down. So you see here that our absorption coefficient goes down, which means the higher the absorption, the more likely that this photon is being absorbed. What we can also see here is that we have different effects that are being described in this kind of figure. And you see, for example, that the effect of pair production only emerges here. So you have to be essentially beyond one mega electron volt for the pair production. 
And then you also see the total attenuation. The total attenuation is this guy here. And what so we also see, you see this nice edges here. This is called the K edge. And the K edges, they are essentially determined by the material. What can we also see here? This is lead, right? And here you generally see really high absorption coefficients because lead is very dense. And essentially two millimeters of lead shield any kind of diagnostic X-ray source. So two millimeters of lead is sufficient to be safe. And this is, of course, the reasons why we use lead as shielding in interventional applications of X-rays, such as no X-rays actually can penetrate your body, two millimeters of lead, and that's enough. And then we can see that dependent on the effect, so this is the Rayleigh scattering, and you see that the Rayleigh scattering is actually following this curve here. So in diagnostic, it's not such a big thing. And then we see the Compton effect, which is happening here. So this is Compton, and this is essentially the dominant kind of absorption. And then, of course, we have on top the photoelectric effect. And let's lose this color for the photoelectric effect. And you see here, the photoelectric effect is the one that introduces decay edges because there we are ionizing certain shells in the hull of the atom and here we then see again that we have characteristic steps emerging exactly at the energies where the characteristic steps in the shell actually occur. Okay, so let's compare that with for example water and what you can already see here is that we have a much lower, so it's still the same energy range, but we have an order of magnitude lower absorption in this plot. So it's very careful that you actually look at the absolute numbers here and here if you want to compare the previous and this plot to observe that this is very different. What's also different in this plot is that we see that we have the total absorption here and again we see for example that there's no k-edges here so water we don't observe k-edges and it's of course because we have very simple hulls so this is hydrogen oxygen and we don't have too many shells here so we don't observe the k-edges and the photoelectric effect and then we also see that the Rayleigh absorption also doesn't play such a big role and this is the Compton scattering. So you see that in different materials, we first of all have different distribution of those effects. So the Compton photoelectric and also the Rayleigh scattering is different in every material and we can characterize this in plots. And we also see all of this is energy dependent. So depending on the energy, the effects mix differently. So this is interesting because now if I observe characteristic energies or distinct energies, so let's say I observe the energy here and the energy here, and I do that for another material as well, then I can characterize the materials from the difference in the absorption characteristics dependent on the energy. And then this gives rise to material separation. This is essentially a similar approach as we've seen already in MR that we had this water fat separation. Similar things can be constructed here with x-rays. We can then differentiate, let's say, water and iodine or any two kind of materials that are different in their absorption behavior for the particular energies that we investigate. <laughs>so this brings us already to the end of this video and in this video you understood how x-rays are actually interacting with matter and we've seen that there are essentially 
three major effects that happen and these are three types of scattering and we've seen that there's the photoelectric effect, the Compton effect and the Rayleigh scattering. And another thing that we observed is that when we describe the entire attenuation of the X-ray, we can see that this is essentially the initial intensity multiplied with this term, that is this e to the power minus the integral through the line through the body. And we also have seen that if we know the detected intensity and the emitted intensity, then we can solve for this line integral, which essentially allows us to understand the X-ray image as a kind of sum, as a kind of superposition of all of the contents of the body into a single image. And this will be very useful when we talk about computer tomography. So I hope you enjoyed this video and understood a bit about the physical effects that actually govern the underlying contrast mechanism of X-rays. And now in the last video regarding X-rays, we want to look into the actual absorption and what's actually happening when we detect the X-rays on the detector. So you enjoyed this video and I'm very much looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye bye.